just gonna do a nice little coconut and curry uh, jumbo prawns. Uh, we'll bring it together with a nice little ginger, some peppers, a um, little bok choy in there, um, and then we'll finish it with a little nice little whole butter, um, always the, the key. Um, and then we'll do a nice little spring salad to go on top and uh, make a little love in the kitchen tonight. Oh, oh right. that's not a word. Yeah, yeah fantastic. The L word. Right. Okay. It shows up, doesn't it? You're right. <laughs> it's the accent. It's right. Right. Come on. Right. Oh, it smells. Yeah, no, no, I love ginger. It's one of those ingredients that kind of give you a nice little pop um, mm -hmm. being on this side of the world and the curries and the ginger and bringing it together with the coconut milk and I think it's a real good um, in addition to, you know, what we're here for. Um, so Max, you, you obviously love the uh, Asian flavors. I do. Um, yes. Asian is my favorite thing to eat. Yeah. And then um, Caribbean is kind of my, my background, my mom's Bahamian, so I try to do a little bit of uh, Caribbean Asian influence. Um, yeah, I'm a French trained, but I try to mix it up a little bit and give you flavors from all over the world. Take you on a roller coaster. Uh, We're in, uh, in Batuta after all. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. for sure. <laughs> okay, great, so where do we start? We're gonna actually, we're gonna get our uh, pan nice and hot. We're gonna add a little olive oil in there. Really get that hot. You always wanna start with a hot pan. Um, just, you know, get the nice little sizzle and lock all the flavors in. Uh, we'll go a little ginger and onions in there. The sizzle is about to happen. It's warming up, warming up, warming up. It's getting there, getting there. Um, so Max, is this? We you know we spoke about um, about kind of children eaters. Is this something you teach kids as well? Yeah, I mean, well, I try to steer food. Yeah, well, we have a foundation called One Chef in Eighty Six Hunger, where we get into the inner cities and, and teach about healthy eating and healthy living. All right, and, and talk about uh, hunger. We think about hunger on a world level, and but we have our kids walking around with you know five hundred dollars shoes on, right. but haven't ate the right things for the last you know four or five days, and so right. um, they're mild nutri nutritious. And so I want to make sure that we understand just how what we put in our bodies, and, and I want to start with kids because I think that's our you know our generation, our next generation, um, and so we get into inner cities and teach that. But then we also teach them culinary arts giving them life skills not only I want to make them all chefs but I want to give them tangible life skills to take on uh, for the rest of their life and I think you surrounded by food and, and, and culinary you have all those tangible things you know it's appearance it's timeliness it's cleanness it's That's you know right. um, so I think I'm giving you know giving them what was instilled into me through food Right, I think that's so fantastic. But what I find really interesting about that is coming, you're from Detroit, and I think like, you know, Eminem, I think rap, and I think, you know, what kids are getting into, what kids are into on the street. There's a really fantastic initiative happening in Lebanon at the moment about um, introducing uh, rap and R&B to young people to keep them out of trouble, Absolutely. to keep them out of maybe other influences that might be in the world at the moment. Yep. And so what I'm loving here is that that's a great idea. Kids want to, they love music, they're into technology, their phones, they're yeah. getting access and them being able to be part of something and feel like they're part of something. But how are they doing with the food? Are they responding to this? Well, you know, from the first day of class, I always uh, kind of do a, a quick Q&A of the things that they like to eat and what they have, you know, what they're used to and what their palate is at. And you'll very find, you know, from, from the first time say, you know, chef, I don't eat beets. I don't eat, you know, carrots. Um, I don't eat squash. And then three weeks into the program, you know, they're eating beets, they're eating squash, you know. Um, I, I ask them a question, I say, you know, what is your favorite part of the chicken? Of course, everyone said chicken tenders and, you know, chicken nuggets, <laughs> of course. Yeah. I'm like, well, there's only two tenders to a whole chicken, so you can't love them that much. And, and But I was like, you know, it's more flavor in the chicken feet than it is anything. So um, it's like stuff like that is kind of trying to change their palate and get them to open their eyes to new, you know, ingredients and new things. And so before the program is over, it's normally a year program, before it's over, they're, they're in love with culinary, they're in love with food, um, and you see them, you know, putting the onus on their parents to buy the right ingredients. And so I think that's part of it as well. You know, cooking is great, but also when you get home to teach your parents and your younger brothers uh, healthy eating and healthy living, yes. and it changes the whole family dynamic, you know. How young do you start, Chef? Uh, ninth grade. Ninth grade. So I think, you know, ninth about grade. About 14 years old. Yep, yep. And yep. I think that's a time when you're trying to figure it out. Yep. And, you know, everyone wants to be an NBA player and, and right. be great in sports, but now it's time for them to you know, figure out the plan B. And that's what I had to do. You know, I thought I was gonna make it to the NBA um, and play professional basketball forever. Uh, that didn't happen. And so I chose, you know, I got a culinary scholarship to play basketball and, and, and um, cook. And that's how it all came together. So, yeah. Oh, what a I, I can hear the tingle already here. Yeah, we got the love happening in there. So now we're gonna okay. add a little, little curry in there. And this is when it starts to come alive. That's when it starts to smell this now. Yeah. 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 Okay, so you've just added the curry powder. Is that what curry you powder put in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we're gonna go a little coconut milk. And why do you add it with the onions now? Is it to infuse, to get the heat? Yeah, so activated? I was wanna, you want to warm the flavors up a little bit yeah. and kind of get the essence and you know the aroma going. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, we you know, smell it all right. When you're cooking at home, you forget mm -hmm. like the simple things and the, the techniques, you know, like warming up your, some of your spices and the herbs because it kind of just give you that aromatic and Yes, and get the oils released. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, actually, I bought this from a local um, spice market here. So, okay. yeah, it's one of my uh, my favorite things. Curry is amazing to me. My mom's Bahamian, so we know we have curry chicken, curry goat, and, and all those things. Sure. And so, uh, when I'm traveling, I make sure I go to different spice markets to see just what's, you know, the great ingredients that they're using. So, this sure. is one of them. Sure. Look, coconut milk going in. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. There's that smell again. There it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now the... Which is fantastic on radio smell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the greatest stars. Uh, yeah, for sure. And we are videoing it as we are videoing it as we speak, so there's an opportunity for you to see what Chef is cooking up as well as hear it as well. Our lovely prawns are going in. Now, are these they... prawns look incredible. Are oh, they yeah. local? They're huge. Are they, they, they are local, yep, yep. Yeah, excellent. Chef. Andy, uh, Chef Andy taught me this one. It's one of his favorites. Yo, <laughs> now, would you wait? Would you wait when you're making this recipe, for instance, for the people who are listening at home? Would you wait for the onions to actually soften before you put in your shrimps? Yeah, you want kind of want them translucent. Yeah. You know, um, I like to kind of leave a nice little bite to them. Okay. Um, you know, let them stew down instead so of continue cooking in there. Right. So I like to kind of give them a nice little, you know, translucent. Um, yeah. And the prawns go in right at the very end because they don't take very don't long take to long cook at all. Yeah, no, no. And I love to kind of keep, you know, all our vegetables kind of uh, al dente. Yep. And so I add so my vegetables crisp. last versus, you know, going first. And you just put nice in some nice in there. orange peppers as well. Goes beautifully with the creamy color. Absolutely. And just to add the, the prawns, you've um, beheaded them, but you've still got the tails on. So shelled, but tails. Correct, 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 correct. I think it's one of those, you know, items where it holds the, the shape of the prawn a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you take the tails off and they'll start to curl they up. They curl up, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, then they look like a scallop. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all, you know, people eat with their eyes, and so it's all presentation based, you know. Yes, yes. Well, it's looking absolutely wonderful. So as that cooks up on our stove here in our beautiful kitchen at Ibn Batuta Mall, when we come back, we'll be sharing more of Chef's insights and tastings as well. And like I said, follow us online at Dubai i 1038com and via our social media and of course when we come back it is a Sunday you know what happens on a Sunday it's the Sunday quiz with the theme I love food for quiz. four yeah good luck because you're going to be one of the contestants right. <laughs> <laughs> stay with us I'm going to turn this one off well done guys are they local those uh, peppers they're selling those at farmers yeah. yeah. smells on radio yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> That's what you have to describe. Don't yes. let them feel left out. But yeah, it's hard. But it actually works all right. It's been working really well. Yeah, yeah they do love it, yeah. So yeah, we've gone to news now. So we've got about five or six minutes. Which, which is like an hour in radio time. I know. So when we come back, because we have got the quiz, but when we come back, Chef, well, I know we would be further along. We might have finished by then, but we'll just pick up on what we did. Amazing. We're going to add some of the same ingredients. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Okay, yeah, so you can save a bit, yeah. <laughs> what a ham, eh? <laughs> Anything, get in the picture. Get in the picture, I think that was hot. It was hot, my God, I didn't know how to turn it off. Would you make this spicy as well as an yeah, option? Yeah, I, I would. You know, yeah. if I'm gonna have a like yeah. nice little. Um, yeah, because I find coconut in there. milk so bland to a certain. Yep, you yep, need yep, to yep. You gotta, yeah, that's why I like the ginger in there and some garlic. Um, right. Give a nice little punch, a little spice in there. Absolutely. Have you put the ginger in yet? Yeah. Oh, you did it with the onions, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 